Hello students. Previous lecture we studied about what is object oriented programming, the power of object oriented programming, what is an object and what is a class and the relations between class and object. Then we also saw class diagram which is divided into three part comprising of class name, class attributes and behavior of the class and then we saw notations for the attributes and methods. Now to take it further, as I said that object oriented programming has few uh, features which are developed for handling co complex programming and such features we will be discussing today. These features are very important to understand. So the first one in that is encapsulation. What is encapsulation? So the mechanism of providing protection to the data and method of program is called encapsulation. It's the, it is the same meaning as, as the meaning of capsule which we eat as medicine. So that capsule, you know that the capsule itself is nothing but it is to protect the medicine inside. Even for rocket launching you know that the rocket is kept in the capsule. So that, that capsule is just meant to protect what is there inside. So here also the meaning is same that the, as much data we want to protect we declare those data as private and once we declare those data as private those data are protected so that no part of the same program or any other program can make any modification in that. So this is possible by wrapping data and method you know that class is made up of data and method that is attributes and functions into a single unit known as class and declaring that class as private. So this is where object oriented programming differs from structured programming. In structured programming there are also data and methods but they are not kept in any unit so that they are publicly available within that program. But in object oriented programming this data and methods are again kept in a unit and that unit is called class and we declare that class you know that we can declare any object or any attribute or any data or any method is private public uh, protected and the fourth one is package but as you declare it as private it is not accessible by any part other part of the program so private members are not available to the other and can be made available only via public method so encapsulation provide data hiding capability encapsulation keeps data from safe from unintended actions and inadvertent access by outside object so once you declare something as private nobody nobody no other part of your program or any other program can do any kind of modification or even can't see that what is there so that is data encapsulation next in line is data abstraction data abstraction is a concept where it says that what you are doing or what it is doing but it won't say how it is being done so that is what data abstraction so it hides the complexity so the simple example of data abstraction is every function of excel you know microsoft excel and there are so many functions you know some function is doing total of numbers now how that function uh, some function is working that we don't know so the complexity of the programming that how it does the calculation is kept hidden from the user. We know that some function is used to do uh, addition but we don't know how it is doing. If you take more meaningful example of this our, our own topic of 12th standard then in chapter 1 we saw form and in form we created two buttons submit button and reset button. If you remember to create this button we just write three words input type is equal to submit or we say input type is equal to reset. Now we know that when we say input type is equal to reset, it creates a reset button and clicking on that button will clear everything which we have entered in the form. So we know that the reset function is resetting every data of the form, but we don't know how it is being done. So that is called data abstraction where the complexity of the program is kept hidden from the user. So implementation details are not available to the user abstract data type that is ADT 
or structures in C and C++ or classes in C++ in Java are the best example of data abstraction. We know the name of the class which is declared as private but we don't know that how that class is being used or implemented. Encapsulation protects data and abstraction enables to represent data in which implementation details are hidden. So this is the difference between encapsulation and abstraction. Don't mix up both of them. Understand that encapsulation is just protecting the data. It is not hiding the data. It just protects the data so that nobody can use that data. You, nobody can modify that data. Whereas abstraction is hiding the complexity of the program. So that is what the main difference between encapsulation and abstraction. The third in line is messaging. Messaging is very simple thing. You created a method and when you call that method to get executed, that is called messaging. It's very simple. You create a function. Suppose somebody created some function in Excel. Now when we use that function, that is called to, call to that function. So that is called messaging. So a call to a method or function is known as a message. Due to encapsulation, all method calls are handled by object that recognizes the method. So, if the old method calls are handled by the object that recognizes that method. Now, how this thing is done? So, there is an example. Suppose we have a display method for different classes. Same method, but for different classes. Date class, person class, time class. All these three classes are having display method. Now, when this method is called in the program, how to know that which display method is to be executed. It is something like there are three students in the same class with the same name and when that name is called out, how does that student will come to know that whom sir is calling. So here the thing is, this is determined using the object that calls the display method. So you say date.display, person.display, time.display, so that is how we identify the different display method of the different class. So once again, there is a method with the same name but in different class. And now when I want to execute particular method of particular class, I need to precede it by the name of the class. For example, display method is available in date, person and time class. But if I want to execute display method of person class, I should say person dot display so that is how program will come to know that i am trying to execute the display method of person class next is polymorphism very interesting one polymorphism means many forms now you know that there can be only one function with the same name there cannot be more than one functions with the same name in computer everything has to be unique in real life it is not like that in real life we may have so many uh, people with the same name but we have other characteristics of their by which we remember them or we can identify them but in computer you know that there can be you know it's, it's simple as simple as in one folder you can have only one file with the same name you cannot have two more than one file with the same name if i create uh, form one dot html then other, another file also if I try to save using form1.html it will not allow me to do it will rather say do you want to overwrite it so we cannot have more than one file name with the same name similarly we cannot have more than one functions also with the same name but polymorphism says that it is allowed the ability to define more than one method or functions with the same name is known as polymorphism then the wonder is how it is possible. So these methods must have different signatures. Now signature of the method must be different. That is number and type of parameters passed to it. That means the number of parameters which we are giving to that particular method having same names should be different. Let me take you back to the previous slide. One slide where I can show you. For example here. We have set birth date method. If you look at the last box, set birth date method, it has three parameters D, M, and Y. And the return type is date. 
Similarly, chain city has got one parameter and that is new city with string type and output is also of type string. Now signature of the method is combination of three things. Name of the method that is set birth date, number of parameters that is DMY and return type that is date. Now what polymorphism says that either of these three things should be different. Now we decided that we want to keep method name same. So set birth date will remain same, set birth date, set birth date. Then it says that either the number of parameters should be different. That is here there are three parameters. Other set birth date method might have two parameters or one parameters or zero parameters. Or it should have different return type. Whereas here the return type is date. It should have different return type. Don't worry. Next chapters all this thing will be looking through the program so that it would at that time it would be more clear if you don't understand right now but remember that polymorphism is something where you create more than one functions or methods with same name but different signature so object oriented programming allows defining more than one method or function having same name but different signatures and this is also known as function overloading or method overloading. It is also called function overloading or method overloading. The last thing in the line is aggregation and composition. Now what is aggregation and what is composition? <clears throat> when objects of one class is composed of objects of other class, it is called either aggregation or composition. So when object of one class is made up of objects of different other classes, it is called aggregation or composition. It represents has a or a part of kind of relationship between classes. For example, motherboard is a part of computer or computer has a motherboard. So wherever between two things, if you can use the conjunction as a part of or has a that indicates it is aggregation or composition. Now what is the difference between both of them when we call it aggregation and when it is called composition. Aggregation represents non-exclusive relationship between two classes. So when there is non-exclusive relationship between two classes it is called aggregation. Now what do we mean by non-exclusive relationship? We'll take one example and we'll understand but before that we let us see what is composition. Composition is exclusive relationship between two classes and using UML that is unified modeling language aggregation is indicated by empty diamond symbol and composition is indicated by field diamond symbol. Now let us understand what is exclusive relationship and what is non-exclusive relationship. Let's say we take example of three classes, person class. Now person class is composed of name class and address class. Once again, understand that we have one person class and that person class is composed of name class and address class. Now the relationship between person class and address class is non-exclusive relationship. Why? The reason is if for any reason if I delete person class then address class can exist on its own it will have no effect and if I delete address class person class can exist on its own without address class so there is a there is no strong relationship between both the classes so that is called non exclusive relationship and that is aggregation but the person class and name class are having exclusive relationship if I delete person class, name class cannot exist and if I delete name class, there cannot be person class. So that is exclusive relationship where both the class are tightly bounded with each other. That is exclusive relationship. It is known as composition and it is same in real life. Let us take the real life example. Person class, address class. That means suppose person as Mr. XYZ and address is his address. For any reason that person's address changes or address is removed, 
that doesn't mean that person is expired or person class cannot exist similarly if that person is not existing for any reason then address class can exist if i expire that doesn't mean my house is also will disappear so my house and myself is having non exclusive relationship but my name and my myself is having strong relationship so if person class is removed name class cannot exist on its own or the name class is removed person class cannot exist on its own so where there is a strong relationship it is composition and where there is weak relationship that is non exclusive relationship it is aggregation now inheritance what is inheritance see inheritance the easiest word is to understand inheritance is varso your grandfather gave his his inheritance that is your dad is his inheritance and you are your parents inheritance so like apne dad papa ne dadu no varso medo apne papa no varso mile that is called inheritance je var samave che pedi dar pedi inheritance is generally referred to as is a kind of relationship so the difference between aggregation composition and inheritance is here here it is is a kind of relationship and over there it is has a relationship or a part of relationship a teacher is a kind of person a doctor is a kind of person an engineer is a kind of person so all this all the attributes of method and methods of class person is applicable to teacher doctor engineer or because when i say i want to create doctor class and i already have person class declared or created now you know that doctor is a person so whatever is there in the person class is going to come in doctor class also but then doctor will have something extra which normal person will not be having so instead of creating doctor class from scratch we can create doctor class by inheriting person class into doctor class and then we just add new features in it so it's something like i am getting some ready made food from outside and then according to my own test i add few things in that so that is inheritance i am not preparing the things right from the scratch i am getting maggi from outside and i am just boiling and putting the masala in that to prepare maggi so i am not preparing maggi right from the scratch that oh, i just to get the flour and uh, make the noodles and then dry dry it up and then i cook it so i just get the ready made maggi and then pour some water and masala in that and read it is ready so that is something called inheritance so in short class that is teacher class inherits all the attributes and behavior of person class and teacher class may also have some additional attributes like subject lecture salary and etc so once again inheritance allows you to reuse your programming code and to extend that programming code so that is extendability of your program you already have one class defined and you want to create another class where you want everything what is there in the previous de- previously defined class and something extra also then you don't need to create everything from beginning you inherit that existing class and then just add new things in that but the only thing is you have you don't have choice ke i want to inherit only this thing and that thing and not uh, this thing once you inherit everything comes in that it is something like ke varsha ma jem paisa aave em koi denu hoy to denu pan varsha ma jaave we can't avoid that so that is called inheritance where we inherit existing class into a new class to extend uh, to create extendability so inheritance is that thing this is the comparison between composition aggregation versus inheritance so in composition classes do not inherit from other classes but are composed of other classes they are not inheriting from other classes they are just made up of different different classes or objects together and make a new object so class contains the attributes where some attributes are objects of other class types so that is what in uh, this composition whereas in inheritance class inherits from other classes in order to share 
reuse or extend the functionality. Here there exists a kind of relationship between superclass and subclass. That is, person class is called superclass and doctor class or teacher class or engineer class is called subclass. So that is how inheritance works. Once again, if your parent class, that is super class, is publicly defined, everything is possible to get in inherited class, that is in subclass. If it is package defined, then also it is possible. If it is protected defined, then also it is possible. But if the super class is defined as private, then it is not even possible to inherit it into subclass. Private members cannot be even inherited. It is only either it is public, package or protected. Again, if you inherit protected class, then in subclass it will be it will become private. Though these things are little advanced because you will come to know only when we do programming that comes in 7th and 8th chapter. But still just to keep in mind that when you inherit a protected class then in inherited class suppose person class is protected and you inherit it into doctor class then whatever is there in a person class will be will become automatically will become private in the doctor class but if the doctor uh, person class is declared as private you can't inherit them also so that is what inheritance i hope you need to see this lecture or read, uh, listen to this lecture minimum 2-3 times to understand the concept and there may be so many questions coming in your mind. So you either ask through the comments or you can ask through other medium. But see that this is, these are the most important concept for to start with any programming. So best of luck, take care, stay safe and we will see for next chapter and next lecture.